Welcome to my budget deck channel where I try to make decks as cheap and playable as possible. So if this is something you'd be interested in, then why not subscribe? And we are back with another pack review. Yay, I'm having a look at the Stardust Dragon pack for all you 5Ds fans. And I'll be talking about a little bit, is this set worth it? Should you invest into this? Uh, how good are the cards budget-wise as well? Do you get your, well, gems worth out of this pack? And... Um, We'll see how it goes. I can already say like it's not gonna be the best possible pack, but it's also like far from the worst. That is mainly due to the archetypes that have been used here and uh, some of the other archetypes that just exist in the game being absolutely abysmal. So it's very, very hard being part of like the top, uh, the bottom 5% of packs because there's some archetypes in this game that are just absolutely awful. And a lot of the time Konami even mixes them with even worse archetypes but we'll surely get to them at one point as well but today we are having a look at the stardust dragons first card stardust dragon this card i want to say is kind of worth it not for itself but because lots of cards utilize this card you need this for some trap cards you need this for some even from some spell cards from time to time not any good ones but uh, there's some stuff if i'm not mistaken and uh, you can use this for lots of different synchros. The effect technically isn't terrible, and if you summon it off of different means, then that uh, works as well. But if you summon it off of different means that doesn't count as properly synchro summoned, then you cannot bring this card back after you use its effect. So that can be a bit iffy from time to time. I would say it's decent value, it's not crazy. If you like Stardust Dragon, then you will want this card. Other than that, uh, yeah, you need it for certain combos, but isn't uh, crazy necessary anymore at this point. We have Shooting Quasar Dragon, a card that used to be like the non plus ultra of boss monsters. That if you could go into this card, that was crazy, crazy. These days, it's a lot easier to go into it. You still need a very convoluted combo. And for Synchro decks in general, for like these Synchro Climb decks, it will be very, very expensive. So if you're a budget player, if you're like a free-to-play player, you might want to look the other way with this one because it's it does a lot, but going into it costs you so much that you might as well play a deck that puts up kind of the same card, uh, but a lot easier and a lot cheaper. Plus, it's been a bit outclassed by the next card, which is Cosmic Blazar Dragon. This card does essentially somewhat the same. It has a bit of a different application. It can float into something else, but it can re redo the stuff because this is more of a, well, Stardust Dragon effect because you can banish this card and then it comes back during the end phase and then technically you can keep doing this, keep doing this, keep doing this. But obviously that makes it a bit harder to finish off games because uh, you will sometimes lose your monster during your turn, during your opponent's turn, and so on and so on and so on. And with 4,000 attack points, you kind of want to use it to attack. The thing is, uh, this card does a lot. It stops your opponents any summon you can negate. Very nice, not just special summons, normal summons as well. So you can shut down decks that heavily rely on that. A card effect or effect activation you can stop very, very easily. And even when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can negate that attack, then end the bad battle phase. Not just that one attack, no, it ends the complete battle phase. So technically this is an answer to one thing that your opponent does regardless of what it is so a very very nice card also not as hard to go into it anymore but you will need lots of ultra rare and super rare stuff along the way which makes it obviously not very budget friendly i would say next up a card that is a spell card wow a spell card and ultra rare slot i'm usually never too happy about because ultra rare spell cards mean you have to run three of them most of the time and this is no exception. This card, very, very nice. There's a different card out now that you can also search synchrons with. And it is a super rare, if I'm not mistaken. So technically you don't need need to run this card anymore. But obviously if you want to have a deck that's as consistent as possible, you wouldn't say no to this one. It's not a hard once per turn. And uh, sends one card to the graveyard, which can be very helpful. It's the top card, so you don't know what it is. But from time to time, that can be helpful and adds any Synchron tuner from your deck to your hand. So very neat card. You won't go wrong with having this, but again, makes the deck very, very expensive if you want to play a well at least somewhat consistent version of it so i like the card and the card isn't wasted and especially on the ultra rare slot i understand but it would be meaning that the deck will be a lot more expensive if you try to go down the uca synchron route we have uh, the super rares now and this one is dual link dragon the dual dragon wow it really is time to duel my friends 
we have this card that could have been a lot better than it is. We have a link four with zero attack and there's nothing in here, like nothing in this effect that changes the attack of this card. I thought like, oh, surely there's some kind of effect that boosts this card attack by crazy. But no, the only thing you can do is during the main phase, you can banish one powerful Synchro Monster or one level seven or eight Dragon Synchro Monster from Exit deck. So already take making this card already takes up more extra deck space as well, because otherwise it is kind of useless. And lots of level seven or eight Dragon Synchro Monsters that you would want to be playing are also ultra rares or super rares. So there's that as well. And then you can special summon one dual Dragon token with the same type attribute level attack and defense that that one Monster at next deck obviously not effect that would have made this card very very good but it is not and uh, you can only use this effect once per turn fair enough and while you control the token your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for attacks also your opponent cannot target this card with card effects well the issue with this is why why would you go into this what does it do it doesn't give you the effect of the monster you banish would be too strong possibly but uh, that would be an option it doesn't even protect your tokens from being targeted or from anything this card could have either been oh this specific card is unaffected by card effect so your opponent to get rid of this has to deal with your tokens and you can't put up if you go into it first turn then during your opponent's turn you can generate another token then they would have to deal with two fairly high attack point tokens that before being able to get rid of this card this would have been amazing but like this you can easily get rid of the tokens you can easily get rid of this card if you don't use targeting stuff and um other than that it doesn't have any good effect it doesn't have any attack stat values it could have been boosted its attack by your all the tokens that you control all the dual dragon tokens at least uh, but it does none of this so this card is absolutely wasted on the super rare slot and it's absolutely wasted in like 99.99999% of all decks i don't know maybe there's some deck where this somehow makes sense but for link four i really doubt it especially including a synchro monster it's not even oh yeah you can just make it with any monsters no you have to make it with one synchro monster absolute abysmal card for a very nice design and a very nostalgic theme so uh, they did the dual dragon definitely dirty here we have a shooting star dragon a card that is it's okay it's decent you can play it uh, it floats from the i think the quasar dragon but you don't really have to be playing it anymore it doesn't do that much but for a super rare it's a decent value card it's not that easy to go into but you can facilitate some kind of otks with it so it's not too bad and it does have some form of negation at least some form of protection so it is it's a somewhat playable card question mark Formula Synchron, on the other hand, one of the very, very playable cards. It's not super easy to win to because obviously you need a level one tuner and a level one monster to go into this, but then it draws you a card at one point and it enables Axel Synchron so you can do stuff during your opponent's turn and use uh, effects of monsters that are Synchro Summoned. Uh, when they are Synchro Summoned, like Satellite Warrior and so on, there's so many cards that do stuff when they are Synchro Summoned and doing that during your opponent's turn is very nice and on a super rare slot it's not too bad wish it wasn't a super rare but don't i always start a spark dragon another one of those cards that it used to be decent when it came out because it could uh, can protect floodgates it can protect itself but i think the last time i've seen this card actually being played non-ironically is blue eyes because it's uh, you can special summon this off one of the blue eyes synchro monsters other than that, nah, doesn't really need to be a super rare. That is just nostalgia bait because it technically is a Stardust Dragon card. This could have, might as well have been a rare card and people might have actually been using it from time to time if they just started out the game like this. Uh, very pointless actually putting this into your extra deck over any other super rare or ultra rare card in my opinion. We have Stardust Warrior, kind of the same principle. This card could have been a lot better, but I think it came out a bit too early and that means it's not too good the attack stats aren't great for level 10 monster um, because it's basically blue eyes but a lot harder to make then the negation effect is nice because you can keep doing it and this card keeps coming back it doesn't banish itself so uh, you can remove it by a graveyard shenanigans and whatnot and the fact that if your opponent would special summon a monster i think it was meant to be against pendulum summons at the time when it came out not 100 sure but uh, that's what i thought it was uh, it would be nice if it does stuff with normal summons as well so you can at least shut down decks that normal summon and have like a very very specific normal summon they want to get off can't do that and yes this card also floats into a warrior synchro monster is not too bad and the summon is at least treated as a synchro summon so there you go 
Uh, it's playable-ish if you want it to be playable, but it isn't the best option that you have anymore either. We have Shooting Riser Dragon, a card that is actually playable. You can bin one monster to the graveyard with the slight restriction that you cannot use its effects that turn. Fair enough, actually, because I think Lavalval chained it then. And we all know how that went. So uh, yeah, for level seven, this is fairly good. It's a tuner, so you can go into different shenanigans with it afterwards. Um, it has some other uh, effects as well. You can, during your opponent's main phase, you can exile Synchro. So this card, very, very good. And I think it's been used in different decks as well, not just like Stardust decks and Synchro decks. I think it's also been used in the Jack Atlas, Resonator, Red Dragon, Arc Fiend, if I'm not mistaken, because there's one card that you would want to be sending to the graveyard. Yeah, I might be wrong here, but I think uh, this one has, for super rare, uh, the most applications in this whole pack. We have Jet Synchron, very, very important card. Used to be banned due to Halky Firebacks. This card's back now, or was always back here. I think it was never banned in uh, Master Duel anyway. Very, very neat. Doesn't only work in like the Synchron decks. You can use this in a lot of different decks because uh, if you dump stuff to the Griever, then this is helpful. You can search it off of certain things. Uh, you can start crazy Synchro combos. Mecha Phantom Beast stuff is still around. So technically, the Spina Machine can be helpful, but without Halky Firebacks, it's not as good anymore. It still does its job and it's a good pickup at least at one but even uh, at three it's not terrible for a super rare uh, either. We have Starlight Road, one of the cards I was chatting about when it comes to well utilizing Stardust Dragon without actually making Stardust Dragon. This card is amazing if you play a trap heavy deck or back row heavy deck because when a card effect is activated that will destroy two or more cards you control you can negate that effect and if you do destroy that card then you can special summon Stardust Dragon from X deck. So if there's ever a format where this becomes a thing and you really like Stardust Dragon, there's better things or different things that can stop um, destruction as well. Or you can obviously play like Waking the Dragons and then just summon a monster that potentially wins you the game right there. Uh, but if you want to keep it a bit old school, Starlight Road is a way to protect back row, is a way to protect any stuff on your board that's very important while getting a Stardust Dragon out and then technically have an, another effect that protects your back row and stuff. So if you really, really need protection for your cards, then this isn't too bad. If, well, let's say destruction removal is, uh, well, destroy two or more cards. If like mass destruction removal is something that is meta relevant, like during the time Twin Twister was played a lot, this card could have seen some play other than that. I think it's outdated a little bit and it doesn't actually count as a synchro summon so you don't actually get your status dragon back but it's not like a bad card by any means. That's it for the super rares and the ultra rares. We have some other shenanigans in here. Some of it's uh, fairly decent. I would have thought that Axel Synchron would end up being a super rare as well, but it didn't. So I'm quite happy about this. Some of the boss monsters that don't really matter all that much because we have uh, better options as well. Plus this is like level, uh, this is level 10, but this is level 12 and so on and so on. But you can be playing these kind of decks without going into the crazy boss monsters. Like this card at least does something. You can banish one synchro monster from your graveyard and it's unaffected by other cards effects for the rest of this turn. Isn't too bad and if it's destroyed by an opponent's card, but even by battle, you can target one or two battle, banished dragon synchro monsters and special summon it. It's okay. It's like not really a boss monster because it only has 3000 attack for a t level 10 monster. It's meh. If it had 3500, we could be talking about it because then it's at least unaffected and your opponent has to run it over by battle and then you can get other stuff back. There are dragon synchro monsters that do things and so on and so on and so on. So this is quite nice. We have some of the other Stardust stuff in here. Righty Driver, Lefty Driver, nice cards. Doppel Warrior, very important for some of the Synchron decks. We have Quick Draw Synchron, a low rarity. Um, we have some, well, kind of more useless cards. Rush Warrior, if you want to be going into some of the UC crazy stuff, then this can be helpful, but also hasn't really been played since like, what, five years anymore. But there is that, technically it's possible. Some of the Warrior cards are in here, but not all of them. I think there's a different pack for that as well. Starlight Junction at a normal, very nice if you want to be going into any of this as well. Other than that, the pack is it's decent, uh, it doesn't give you too much value, but it gives you some cards that you need. I think the problem with this is this pack itself isn't enough to really do anything. So in terms of value, you will have to open another pack. And in here, mainly the extra deck monsters are the important ones, but tuning. If tuning was in a different pack that would give you a bit more, uh, it might be also, I don't know, sometimes they put uh, cards in two packs, then would be a bit different. Uh, the thing is, lots of the boss monsters in here, it would be better to just craft them at one because you don't really need them at three or at all. So I wouldn't say it's a pack that you should be buying. It's not gonna break your legs if it uh, if you buy it, 
but I would say like two or three out of 10, not that good in terms of budget value. You get some decent cards, but nothing that even, well, is actually a deck. Like you can't really make any of this into a functioning deck. Uh, some other packs you can open and then you have an already somewhat functioning deck that you can just upgrade. This one isn't that at all. It needs so many more pieces and uh, there's so many better ways of actually getting into the cards that are in the set uh, and even if it's just by using your ultra rare points to craft them so wouldn't recommend it but it won't be like the worst of the worst it is what it is if you like the video leave a like comment subscribe but most importantly i hope you have a nice day